Today, we are going to chat through a huge soccer syndicate that has scammed upwards of $1 million out of the hands of poor average Joe collectors. This is incredibly pervasive within the card industry. It impacts PWCC, Golden, Probstein, PSA, BGS, CGC, SGC. Basically, anyone that is anyone with prominence within this industry has you know, helped facilitate this scam in some way or another. Now, I'm going to take you through essentially all the information that is known with these fake soccer cards and, and essentially what has gone down. I'm going to take you through, you know, what these businesses can be doing better, how the average Joe has been burned, and essentially leave a lot of discussion points for us down in the comments below, as always. Now, the first thing I want to do is essentially go through the whole situation, and give you some background. Now, some of you would have been aware of this because Card Porn spoke about it. You know, I want to say 12 months ago, I think we did on this channel as well as did Sports Card Radio. And that is an individual by the name of Christian Nieto that has essentially been printing a bunch of vintage soccer cards, rookie cards for the players of, you know, Messi, Thierry Henry, you know, Cristiano Ronaldo, a, a few others as well, uh, multiple others, I should say, basically printing them and then getting them somehow slipped through the cracks of these graders and then end up on auction houses where, you know, unsuspecting customers unfortunately get burned. And all the information I'm going to take you through today was given to me by an anonymous source. They don't want to be named, so I've got to respect that. I'll put some things up on screen, some Im images throughout this video to give you guys some context. If uh, you missed anything, please let me know in the comments below, and I'll be more than happy to clarify. Now, this guy, Christian Nieto, also goes by Cali Cards, as again, you probably would have heard at some point in the past. He had essentially a pretty elaborate syndicate going where he would, you know, get these cards printed himself, he'd send them in to be graded, and then eventually, you know, people within the hobby would become switched on, and they'd complain to these graders. These graders would realize, well, hang on a minute, all these fake cards you know, coming from one person. This is also impacted out at card shows as well. So they banned him. So what does this syndicate then do? As any syndicate does, they try and find additional ways to, to rot the system. He got his wife involved. He had family friends involved. He had his cousin involved. He had, you know, a multiple other people also get involved in this process where they all started submitting these cards. And that's why it goes to some of the issues with some of these graders, right? Because banning him is not that simple, right? When you've got an elaborate syndicate like this, it's pretty easy for them to bypass things as much as possible. And like I also touched on, so this guy was essentially printing fake cards and you are talking upwards well over a million dollars of known fake cards that have either been sold on eBay through via Probstein, PWCC, Golden's website, Heritage Auctions, I think some went through there as well. These are just the confirmed cards to have gone through this scam, right? We don't really know the true volume of these, especially some of those that may have been sold raw locally at some of these card shows. And they essentially have all hit these platforms like I basically just said, and they've got, almost got no regard to stop doing this in the future. There's been plenty of guys out there, which I'll get to a little bit later on, that are sort of doing a really, really good thing within the hobby to try and spot these things and alert these companies and notify them of, of, of these cards that are showing up. But these businesses keep somehow re, either relisting them after initially declining that they should be on their platform, but also just don't have any regard for it at all. They just keep landing on their platform. And there's, I think, eight to 10 in the last couple of weeks on PWCC alone have showed up. There's a few others, which I'll show you on eBay right now. There's one in particular that also looks like it's a fake card. But you're talking, you know, eight to 10 Zidane and Thierry, Thierry Henry rookies that have showed up in the last two weeks on PWCC, yet they've done nothing about it. They, they get notified, take it down, and a couple weeks later, it, it's sort of back up. And when you think about how this has gotten through out at PSA, it's gotten through to BGS, it's also impacted, you know, SGC and CGC, the, the volume of this is, is quite worrying. And it's almost like, well, what are these graders actually doing? How can these graders not spot these things? You know, fakes come in, they grade them, make a mistake. So what do they do next? And BGS appears to be the worst of these. They've definitely graded far more than anyone else in this space. And now I'm not sure, you know, why that is, whether their process is just that much more slack than anybody else, whether there's any hanky-panky going on out, out of BGS with regards to you know, somebody on the inside doing something. That's just speculation on my part, but it's pretty worrying that BGS appear to be the worst on this, and they're also the, the worst one to try and get in contact with, to be honest. Now, in terms of the issues at hand, outside of just talking about the volume of these fake cards, you know, that have gone through to these auction houses and through to these graders, a big problem is the fact that it's still happening. You know, we've been talking about this, uh, and when I say we, I mean people like Cardboard and Sports Card Radio for you know, well over 12 months, when you check out some of these Discord channels, when you check out, you know, things like blowout forums, you're seeing whispers of this everywhere and you have for quite some time. So what is actually being done from these businesses to try and do better? And it's a really disappointing thing, you know, for me to see. As an external auditor, you know, process risk points and risk appetite is 
my bread and butter, right? And when I see these kinds of things happening, it once again tells me that their business processes are not very good. You know, despite banning a customer, how do you not have, you know, an additional layer to try and get better at spotting these things moving forward? You ban people, okay, then they start using their friend. Okay, then you ban their friend. Okay, then they start using, you know, group submitters. Like, what, what's going on here? There's so many loopholes for these guys to get the same cards into your platform, yet you then still can't spot them? Like, what are you doing internally to try and uplift, you know, the knowledge within your within your graders, as an example? What's what's PWCC doing to, to also double-check the work of Beckett? They know that these cards, consistently the same ones, these Ronaldo, you know, autos and, not autos, sorry, rookie cards, consistently coming through. So why are they still putting them on their platform? Why are these graders still grading these known cards that have, you know, a pervasive issue with regard to the volume of, you know, fakes coming through. So what are, you, what are you guys doing? And, you know, in my opinion, these graders, and I've talked with this with a few people as well, these graders really should be banning these cards being submitted. We've seen um, SGC do this in recent times, if I remember correctly, with regards to a certain type of Pokemon card, they've banned it. Why does not, you know, PSA, BGS, CGC, SGC do this for these types of cards? Ban them until you have, you know, an appropriate level of expertise within your graders to, to actually work through them. But no, they don't want to because they only care about the dollar, right? They don't care enough. And the problem is you've got these poor average Joes that are, you know, buying these cards off these platforms. And then, you know, specifically, let's use BGS as an example. You buy a card off PWCC. It's graded. It's a fake Ronaldo. You find out later that it's fake. You say, okay, well, what, what am I going to do now? I'll contact PWCC. PWCC, well, they say... It's graded by BGS. You go talk to BGS. BGS say, well, we give you no guarantee, so you're shit out of luck. Now, you, you're a poor average Joe who's just bought, you know, a Grail card, costs you six, ten thousand dollars USD, whatever it is they're selling for. You've got this card now. It's worthless. You can't do anything with it because the community out there knows that they are fake. BGS, you know, can't do anything because there's no guarantee. PWCC says BGS's problem. So what are you going to do in that situation? Which is why, in my opinion, you know, it's really unacceptable with how they've gone about handling it right now. BGS, why are you still grading these cards? You've got so many fakes out there in your slabs. You decertify them, and then all of a sudden they pop back up. There's actually a pretty um, famous example that was explained to me by this individual where they identified a fake card. This person reached out to PSA. PSA said, bring the card in. They, they decertified it, and then they looked at it again and said, you know what, it's still good, even though the community knows it's pretty clearly a fake. So what what's going on here once again? Where is your risk appetite as a business? You should be treating things like this with... Uh, a huge amount more of respect than what you currently are. They don't really see it as a big problem. Like surely when you're talking about, you know, something of this pervasive nature, right? It's so systematic with how these people have printed these fakes, submitted them to these graders. It's, it's ridiculously large in terms of the volume, even just from a, a number of cards perspective, let alone the million dollar plus that we know about, yet they're not thinking it's urgent enough to, to sort of stop, you know, these all together. And like I said, you've got a complete lack of accountability from these businesses. And that's, some of you might disagree with that, but I don't know how you can look at this situation, look at the volume of cards they've sort of made mistakes on, and this is at both a grader and auction house, yet they've not done anything about it. They don't really care for you as a customer. They all just, you know, say, well, go talk to BGS, but you say, well, go talk to PWCC. Go talk to PWCC, go talk to somebody else, right? It's just, everyone's shifting the, the puck around, I think is the saying. It's just, you know, completely unfortunate. Now, some of you might say, well, Daniel always give us the negative points, what they're doing wrong. What can they be doing better? You know, I think it's pretty clear in this specific instance, the auction houses should stop taking these kinds of cards and consignment. These graders should stop grading these kinds of cards until they have, you know, a sufficient level of expertise within their business. A big thing here that I always talk about with mistakes is some, some of these graders have made in the past, how they'll grade something, they'll have it on hand for a couple of days, they'll grade it, whatever. It goes on the internet and then like that, People that are collectors in this space can immediately tell that it's fake. They can typically do this in minutes. You see this happened quite recently with SGC, actually, with a Top Sun Charizard card. They spot it pretty quickly. So why can't these graders? Why can't these graders um, tap into this, you know, knowledge within the industry of, of collectors? Go talk to some of these collectors and say, okay, well, you've reported a number of fakes to us. What can we do to be better within this process? What are the things that you're spotting that our graders aren't? Why can't they do something like that where they bring these guys in and run like an internal training session or something along those lines? Why aren't they doing that? And it's a simple question to ask, but you know, the response you're going to get from them is probably silence because they don't see it as a problem. From their perspective, they're still going to get paid regardless. It's a hard thing to prove, you know, from a PSA guarantee perspective. They, they like to, to mess you around pretty hard in that space. BGS don't have one. So what do you do? Well, you're shit out of luck. 
Uh, I don't like to swear in my videos, but what else are you going to do in this situation, right? You've spent $10,000 on a card. Just imagine you as an individual buying a card for $10,000 and then having this happen to you. You've got no recourse for a refund. It's utterly ridiculous in my opinion. It's, it's not good enough. And again, these auction houses need to try and do something a little bit better. You know, if they still want to put these on their platform because they want to say, okay, we trust BGS, why can't these auction houses somewhat incorporate a guarantee in some capacity for their customers? It's not good enough that PWCC can clearly say to a customer, go talk to BGS. BGS do not offer a guarantee to us as customers. You know, we're seeing some lawsuits right now with Alt and BGS and a few others about these people trying to state to BGS, well, you're authenticating a card. Your label tells me that this card is okay. That's why I bought it. You can't say that there's no guarantee. And unfortunately, until something changes with regard to some kind of precedent in a lawsuit, we're not going to see anything change in this space. It's just, you know, not good enough. And I also think, you know, given that these guys have used grip submitters in the past to try and bypass the fact they themselves have been banned, you know, group submitters need to be held a little bit more accountable here as well. And again, it's really unfortunate for group submitters because it's not their problem, but they need to do better when it comes to vetting customers themselves. You know, PSA should, and BGS should give these, you know, group submitters a list of people that are banned if they're not already doing it. And then if a group submitter somehow gets a fake card in via somebody that is banned or something along those lines, PSA should give them like a soft ban as an example and say, well, you can't group submit for at least two weeks or something along those lines. Just do something to try and hold these people more accountable. It's not their problem, right? It's not their fault that something slipped through the crack. But at the moment, PSA and BGS are not doing enough in this space. And something like that at least is a step in the right direction. If these people become a bit more noticed in their local communities, which for this guy, Christian Nieto, he already sort of is, but you guys get to where I'm trying to go, right? And again, some of you might be asking, well, Daniel, you've talked a lot. How do we know where to go if maybe I've got one of these cards? I think, you know, the best example for you to follow is people like the Blake58 on Instagram. He does a really, really good job spotting these kinds of things. This is the guy in question, Christian Nieto, Kelly Cards, as I explained a little bit earlier. You've got other people like Tiffany Cards that does a really good job as well when it comes to, you know, highlighting some of these fake cards on the website. I think I've showed you the website many times in the past. You've also got Soccer Study, who is my understanding, he's got an Instagram and a Discord. My face is really orange right now. I'm not sure what's going on there. But this, again, is one of the Cristiano Ronaldo stickers in question. Like, you come to his page and you're going to see things, you know, pretty quickly where there's a lot of suspect cards sort of popping up all the time. Here's another one, which is uh, Ronaldinho, obviously the uh, Brazilian superstar. You know, this kind of thing. In a BGS slide, what the heck is going on? So if, if you think you've probably got something that is a little bit questionable, come check out these pages, use these resources to your advantage because they're going to be your best source of trust over some of these businesses within the hobby that are meant to be doing a lot better. But unfortunately, they've got, you know, complete lack of accountability. This is also a card that's popped up on, on eBay in the last day or two. Again, people think this might be a fake. It is a Cristiano Ronaldo sticker rookie. Again, there's things popping up left, right and center that just shows that this stuff is incredibly pervasive out of these businesses. It's not good enough and they need to be doing a lot better. Now, I, I hope I conveyed you know everything as well as I thought I did in this video. I talked a lot, probably talked a little bit too far. So I do apologize if that was the case. If you have you know any questions, please you know drop them down in the comments below because this kind of thing is completely unacceptable. Like I, I'll reiterate, reiterate once again, you've got these businesses that are still willing to grade cards. They're still willing to put them on their auction house despite being told multiple times that these cards are fake. They know that these fakes are targeted in on certain cards within this population, right? Within these releases of these many different products, yet they still grade them. What are they doing to try and protect you as a customer? Right now, they're not doing a whole lot. They're very happy, like I talk about all the time, to line their pockets and make as much money off you as a customer as possible yet they don't do anything to uplift their process. You know, the analogy I sort of use all the time, these businesses, you know, from a risk appetite perspective, okay, they were more than happy to charge you X, Y, Z dollars 10 years ago, right? Even five years ago, because that's where the hobby was. The hobby was always, you know, somewhat expensive, but it was nowhere near what it is today. And they've jumped to, you know, the boom, and they've been saying, well, so, so many more customers, customers want to use us now, we're going to charge you a lot more money because we can but when they've done that, they've not uplifted their process. They've not made their internal processes stronger or more robust. They've not trained, you know, their staff to be more, you know, aware of these risks that are happening out there, these scams that are happening. They've kept everything the same. The only thing is they've charged you more. It's a really, really poor thing as a business, and it's a really easy thing to spot. You know, even though we're on the outside looking in, because 
These mistakes are so pervasive within their business process. They're so pervasive across the industry as a whole. It is not good enough, you know, in any way, shape or form. So I hope that point was conveyed to you today. I hope you liked the video. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one. Cheers.